Welcome back to our YouTube channel. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. A hacker in a dark room, lines of complex code cascading down a MacBook screen, seemingly unlocking secrets with every keystroke. It's a visually compelling image. It looks cool, right? Sleek, sophisticated, and undeniably powerful. The MacBook seems like the perfect tool for digital espionage. But here's the truth, a dose of reality for those Hollywood-fueled fantasies. Hollywood gets it wrong, often prioritizing aesthetics over accuracy. Most real hackers, the ones operating outside the silver screen, tend to avoid Macs. They have their reasons, and they're pretty solid. Sure, MacBooks are undeniably beautifully designed and incredibly user-friendly. They are a pleasure to use for everyday tasks, but that's simply not what hackers need in their digital toolkit. They require something far more adaptable and open. For hackers, the best tool means complete control over the operating system, unparalleled flexibility to modify it, and unrestricted access to every level of the system. It's about more than just good looks. It's about the power to bend the machine to your will. Apple's ecosystem, with its tight controls and carefully curated experience, is more like a gilded prison than a playground for hackers seeking freedom and exploration. The very features that make macOS safe and secure for everyday users, protecting them from malware and accidental misconfigurations, are the exact same ones that frustrate hackers trying to probe its depths and uncover vulnerabilities. Apple's walled garden approach meticulously protects users by tightly controlling the hardware, the software that runs on it, and even which apps you are allowed to install. That's undeniably great for overall security and preventing novice users from making mistakes. But it's absolutely terrible for anyone who wants to tinker under the hood, modify system files, or push the boundaries of what the system can do. So with all that in mind, why do hackers generally steer clear of Mac OS as their primary hacking platform? We're about to break down the real reasons behind this preference. Diving deep into the technical details. We'll take a closer look at Apple's built-in security features and how they impact a hacker's workflow. We'll compare them to the open source flexibility of what hackers actually prefer and commonly use, Linux. And ultimately, we'll show you why that shiny premium MacBook Pro is very rarely a hacker's first choice when selecting their weapon of choice for digital exploration and penetration testing. It's a classic case of beautiful design and user-friendliness, clashing directly with the critical need for raw, unfiltered functionality and absolute control over the system. First up, Gatekeeper. It's a core security feature on macOS, and it plays a crucial role in protecting your system from malicious software. Think of it as a bouncer for your Mac, standing guard and carefully scrutinizing everything that tries to enter. It's the first line of defense against potentially harmful applications. Gatekeeper is constantly checking the ID of every app you try to run, ensuring it meets Apple's security standards. It's like a digital customs agent, verifying the authenticity and safety of each application before it's allowed to proceed. If an app isn't signed by a registered Apple developer, meaning it lacks the proper credentials and verification, Gatekeeper blocks it. End of story. It simply won't allow the application to run, preventing potential security risks. For most users, this is invisible and seamless. It operates quietly in the background, providing a layer of protection without disrupting their workflow. But for hackers, it's a nightmare. It throws a wrench in their plans and makes their job significantly harder. Hackers rely on custom tools and scripts, often created outside the traditional app development ecosystem, none of which are signed or notarized by Apple. This lack of official verification immediately raises red flags for Gatekeeper. Every time they try to run their code to execute malicious commands or exploit system vulnerabilities, Gatekeeper throws up roadblocks. It acts as a constant barrier, preventing unauthorized code from running. Sure, you can manually override it if you're determined and know what you're doing, but that's extra friction, something hackers hate. It adds time and complexity to their operations. When you need to run dozens of scripts quickly, perhaps as part of an automated attack, constant security prompts kill productivity. Each prompt requires manual intervention, slowing down the entire process. 
Apple's philosophy is to protect users from bad decisions, even if it means limiting their freedom, prioritizing security over freedom. They believe that a secure system is more important than absolute user control. Hackers need the opposite. They thrive on unrestricted access and the ability to modify systems at will. Total freedom to run any code, anytime. They need to be able to experiment and explore without limitations. Gatekeeper is the first big reason, the initial hurdle, why macOS is so unwelcoming for hackers. It creates a hostile environment for those seeking to exploit the system. It's designed to keep out the bad guys, to protect the vast majority of users from malware and other threats, and in the process, it keeps out anyone who wants to experiment, to tinker with the system in unconventional ways. For hackers, Gatekeeper isn't just a feature, it's not simply a setting that can be easily bypassed. It's a wall, a significant obstacle that requires considerable effort to overcome, and it's only the beginning. There are many other security measures in place that further complicate the lives of hackers on macOS. Next, System Integrity Protection, SIP. If Gatekeeper is the bouncer, SIP is the steel vault. SIP locks down critical system files and folders, even from users with root access. On Linux, root can do anything. On macOS, SIP says no to even the most privileged user. This is a huge win for security. Even if malware gets in, it can't touch the system's core. But for hackers, SIP is a deal breaker. Many advanced techniques require modifying the OS at a low level. SIP blocks that. Disabling SIP isn't easy. You have to reboot into recovery mode and run special commands. It's a hassle and often not worth the effort, especially when easier targets exist. SIP is Apple's way of saying, you can't break the rules here. For hackers, that's a showstopper. It's one of the biggest reasons Mac OS is so tough to crack. Even if a hacker gets past Gatekeeper and SIP, Apple has another trick sandboxing. Every app runs in its own isolated box with strict limits on what it can access. If a hacker compromises an app, they're trapped inside the sandbox, no access to your documents, emails, or system files. Breaking out requires finding a second, rare vulnerability, a sandbox escape. For security researchers, this is frustrating. Their tools need broad access, but sandboxing blocks them at every turn. On macOS, hacking tools are constantly denied access, making deep system inspection nearly impossible. Sandboxing is containment by design. It's another wall that keeps hackers out and keeps your data safe. For hackers, it's like trying to inspect a house through the keyhole. Combine gatekeeper, SIP, and sandboxing, and you get a system that's not just secure, it's slow and frustrating for hackers. Every step is met with friction, security prompts, permission dialogues, and blocked actions. Penetration testers need to run dozens of tools quickly. On Mac OS, each step is slowed by security measures. What takes minutes on Linux can take hours on a Mac. This constant battle with the OS kills creativity and discourages experimentation. Hackers want to focus on their target, not fight their own computer. The result? Hacking on macOS is inefficient and unrewarding. Most hackers simply move on to easier, less secure systems. The path of least resistance never leads through Apple's walled garden. For hackers, macOS is a fortress and not worth the siege. So what tools do hackers reach for in their digital arsenal? What operating systems provide the flexibility and power they need to conduct their operations? The answer, more often than not, is Linux. Specifically, security-focused distributions like Kali Linux. This is often the first distro that comes to mind when thinking about hacking, and Parrot OS. These operating systems aren't just a matter of preference, they're built from the ground up for security professionals. Linux, in many ways, is the philosophical opposite of Mac OS. It gives users total control, offering unparalleled freedom to tinker and explore, but it also expects them to possess a certain level of technical understanding. You're in charge, but with great power comes great responsibility. No SIP, no gatekeeper, no sandboxing. The training wheels are off. If you have root access, you can do absolutely anything. The system is yours to command. This level of freedom is absolutely essential for hacking, modifying the kernel to suit specific needs, inspecting processes to understand system behavior, crafting network packets to test vulnerabilities. Kali Linux comes preloaded with hundreds of specialized hacking tools, ready to use right out of the box. No need to hunt down and compile essential utilities. 
No permission issues to wrestle with, no security roadblocks standing in your way, just pure efficiency, allowing you to focus on the task at hand. Linux's open source nature is also a huge draw for those in the security field. Hackers can inspect the code, modify it to their liking, and customize everything to meet their specific requirements. If a tool doesn't quite do what they want, or if they find a vulnerability, they can simply change it, adapting it to their needs. This level of granular customization is simply impossible on macOS, with its more lockdown approach. For hackers, Linux isn't just an operating system, it's a flexible, dynamic platform for innovation, a digital playground where they can push the boundaries of what's possible. It's built from the ground up for experimentation, speed, and achieving tangible results. That's precisely why it's the overwhelming choice for serious security work, from penetration testing to vulnerability research. Linux is, without a doubt, the hacker's playground, the ultimate environment for digital exploration and security mastery. Let's compare a simple task, scanning a network for open ports and vulnerabilities. On Kali Linux, you open a terminal, run your commands, and everything works. Fast, seamless, no friction. The OS helps, not hinders. On Mac OS, you might not have the tools installed. You'll need to use Homebrew, solve permission issues, and fight the firewall. Even after setup, security features can block or slow down your scans. Sandboxing might prevent tools from writing logs or accessing needed files. By the time you're troubleshooting, the Linux user is already exploiting vulnerabilities. The difference isn't just preference, it's productivity. Linux lets hackers work at full speed. Mac OS makes them fight for every step. That's why hackers choose Linux every time. For hackers, it's about using the right tool for the job. Macs are great for design, editing, and productivity, but not for hacking. Apple's focus on security and simplicity means less control and transparency. Hackers need the opposite, power, flexibility, and the ability to break things. Linux is built for this. It's open, powerful, and expects users to know what they're doing. The hacking community and tool ecosystem are centered around Linux. Most tools are developed for Linux first, with better support and documentation. Using macOS cuts hackers off from this ecosystem, making their job harder. The movie image of a hacker on a MacBook is pure fantasy. In reality, most hackers use old ThinkPads running Kali or Parrot OS, machines built for the job. Linux is the superior tool for hacking, plain and simple. So, why do hackers avoid macOS? Not because it's bad, because it's too secure. Apple's layers of protection, gatekeeper, SIP, sandboxing, make hacking slow, frustrating, and often pointless. For everyday users, that's great news. The same friction that frustrates hackers protects your data. macOS is a fortress by design, and that's its greatest strength. Linux, by contrast, is a playground for those who want total control. The choice isn't about looks or brand, it's about functionality. For hackers, macOS is a cage. For users, it's a shield. Next time you see a movie hacker on a MacBook, remember, real hackers want results, not just style. MacBooks are amazing for many things, but as a hacking rig, not a chance. Apple built a fortress, and most hackers would rather just walk around it.